In 2023, the demand for video editors has reached new heights as videos continue to dominate the digital landscape. For any of you that have watched my content before, you know I like to be concise yet informative with my videos. In this tutorial, I won't be diving deep into any specific part of the program. Instead, I will teach you the basics, from starting a new sequence right through to exporting. By the time you get to the end of this video, you will have a basic understanding of the concepts of editing within this program. So when you first open Premiere Pro, you'll be hit with a loading screen, and then depending on your version, your main screen might look a little different. The first thing you want to do to get started editing is to click New Project in the top left corner, and then you'll be greeted by this screen. Here is where you will name your project, as well as where your project will be stored on your computer. If you want to save it to a different location, you can just click on Browse and go to a different folder to save it in. So once that's done, we can ignore the rest of the settings on this page and go down and click OK. Depending on your version of Premiere Pro, your layout might look a little different than mine, but there are four basic areas of editing within the program. Your preview screen, which is a live version of your current video footage that will be displayed. Effect controls. This is where you can make basic modifications to your videos such as zoom, position, and opacity. Down here on the left will be your project panel, and is where your media clips will be stored until you drag them into your timeline. And finally, the timeline. Here is where you will be doing your main editing within the program. If for some reason you don't see a specific panel anywhere on your screen, you can activate it by going over to the Window tab and then selecting whatever is missing from the drop-down menu. Now let's create our sequence. So there are actually two ways you can do this. You can either go over to your project panel, right-click, and select New Item and then Sequence. Or you can go up to File and select a new sequence there. On this screen, you will see a list of preset options that will automatically select your video settings. For the most part, you can just select DSLR 1080p24, which means it will create a new sequence in Full HD 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. If you want to get more specific with your options, you can go over to your settings and click the Editing Mode drop-down and set it to Custom. With this selected, you can modify everything like the frame rate and resolution, among many other options. For this tutorial, I'm just going to select the DSLR preset and then go down and name my sequence and click OK. Now you'll be back on the main screen and notice a timeline slider has been added to your timeline. This means that Premiere Pro is ready to accept raw footage into the timeline. So this leads us to our next topic. Down here in the project panel, you can organize your footage into specific folders which I highly recommend you do as it will save you a ton of time later on. For this tutorial, I'm going to create two folders one for my video and one for my audio. Right click in the empty project area and select new bin, which is equivalent to a folder in Windows, which you can then name. So now that we have our folders created, let's add some files to them. The easiest way is to navigate to where they are on your computer and then just drag and drop them into those folders. But you can also just double click on the folder and then right click in the empty space and click import and get them that way. Now you're free to click and drag any of your media files into your timeline. There are a ton of tools and effects in Premiere Pro, but today I want to go over some of the basic ones that you will end up using the most. The Selection tool is selected by default and it's what allows you to move clips around on the timeline, or shorten them, or do whatever you want essentially. Next up, we have the Razor tool. This allows you to make cuts in your audio and video to trim off unneeded footage. To use it, Simply click the icon, then go over to your timeline to where you want to make your cut and click on it. Then you're free to move that part of the clip somewhere else, or even delete it altogether from your timeline. Another important feature to know is how to modify the speed of a clip. Sometimes through your editing, you will have a need to either speed up or slow down a clip to sync up with the rest of your footage or other edit that you're doing. Simply right click the clip you want to modify the speed of and go to speed slash duration. On this screen, you can increase the percentage to speed up your clip, or lower it to slow it down. Premiere Pro has lots of shortcuts, but there's two very essential ones that will save you insane amounts of time in your editing. Normally to duplicate something in Premiere Pro, you would select the clip and hit Ctrl C to copy it, then move to another part of your timeline and paste with Ctrl V. You can easily duplicate a clip by simply holding Alt and clicking and dragging that clip to another part of your timeline. The other need-to-know keyboard shortcut is the cut. We went over the razor tool earlier and how you can use it to cut your clips, but there's a much faster way to do this. If you move your timeline slider to where you want to make the cut, highlight the footage by clicking on it, then hold Ctrl and push K to make your cut. 
Next up, we have the basic zoom. This can be useful if you want to zoom into your footage to highlight a specific subject or area. To zoom in or out, simply highlight your clip on the timeline and then go over to effect controls. Scale is the setting we use to zoom with. Increase this value to whatever you want, then if needed, you can use the X and Y position controls to move your screen around to compensate for the zoom. If you want to know how to make a gradual animated zoom over time like this, simply click this link. So you're ready to start recording the voiceover for your video. Thankfully Premiere Pro makes it very easy to do this. On your timeline to the left, you'll see some microphone icons on your audio layers. To start recording your audio, all you have to do is move the timeline slider to where you want to start recording and then click on one of these microphone icons. A 3 second countdown timer will then prompt, after which Premiere will show you that it's recording. To stop recording, simply click the microphone or stop buttons and your audio recording will be sitting on your timeline. So you've made your audio recording, but it's either too loud or too quiet. To change the volume of your clip, right click it on your timeline and click on Audio Gain. On this screen, there are a few different ways you can modify the audio, but my preference is to use the Normalize Max Peaks 2 option. The reason is that this setting will lower the total volume, but in addition will have an increased effect on louder portions of your audio. This will give you a more consistent volume and no annoying loud spikes. A video transition is some sort of visual effect that moves from one video clip into another, and in Premiere Pro there is a near infinite amount of different transitions you can add. Film Dissolve and Dip to Black are probably some of the more common ones that you will use as a new editor. Film Dissolve sort of fades one clip into another without going dark, while Dip to Black actually fades the video out completely, leading into the next for a cinematic Hollywood style effect. To add either of these to your footage, you must have two clips that are side by side on your timeline. Then you can go over to search under effects and type it in or navigate to it manually by clicking the drop down for video transitions and clicking and dragging the effect in between your footage. Next up, we have titles and text. To add text to your video, go over to your project panel and you'll see a letter T or you can just hit T on your keyboard and it'll activate the type tool. Once activated, you can go directly over to your preview window and click somewhere on the screen and a little red box will appear where you can start typing in your text. You'll also notice a pink clip has been added to your timeline. This is the text that you just created and you're free to click and move it to any point in your timeline. To make specific adjustments to your text, go over to Essential Graphics and double click the text you just typed and it should highlight red on the preview screen. If you don't see the Essential Graphics window, you can activate it by going over to the Window tab and selecting it from the drop-down menu. Now you can go down and change the font or size of your text, and if you want to center it, you can click on these two icons here. So you've finished editing your entire project, added the effects and transitions and everything else, and you're ready to export your video. So you have two options. Go over to File and scroll down to Export and click on Media, or you can just hit Ctrl M on your keyboard and the Export menu will come up. On this screen, there is a multitude of options, but let's just focus on the basics. If all you want to do is export in high quality, go over to Format and select H.264 from the drop-down list. Then from the preset list, select Match Source High Bitrate. Now click on the blue link to name your file and choose where you want to save it. If you scroll down under Video, check off Render at Maximum Depth and then go down and simply hit export and Premiere Pro will begin exporting your new mp4 video file. Premiere Pro can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be, but by focusing on the basics and slowly learning over time, you will find that you're able to hone your skills as a video editor and your video production will greatly improve.